What's up guys? So we're here at the gun range, local gun range, 25 yards. I have the Air Force Condor and my goal today, kind of a project. I'm going to do a couple different projects on this channel just to get, you know, just to, I guess, spice things up a little bit. I've had problems with Condors before. They're not my, they're not my favorite gun or most accurate gun. I have problems shooting them accurately and there's, there's a lot of little mods you can do. So I have a 25, 25 caliber Condor. I have a sound modifier on it, no other modifications. And then I have 12 projectiles, basically two pellets, 25 grain and a 34 grain, and then 10 different slugs, all the way from 33 grains up to 65 grain griffins. And so the goal, I guess the goal here, um, is just to see what the gun likes. And I'm gonna shoot tethered, so you know probably 2,500 to 2,800 PSI. And with that, if I can get dime sized groups or smaller, I'd be ecstatic because then I can clean the barrel, do some small mods to it. And what I really want to do is stretch this out a long ways, uh, 50, 100, 200 yards, see if I can get something acceptable, kind of like, like the other guns out there for a lot less price tag. Plus the Condor has a ton of power, 120, 125 pounds, foot pounds of energy, not a problem with this gun. And then if this doesn't work, I can always kind of trade up to the 257 and try that bad boy because everybody talks about that gun as far as being long distance and how good it is. But yeah, let's get in the stop the talking. Let's get into the range and, and see if we can get some groups and I'll get you back home, kind of walk you through uh, the process and what I think, see what groups the best and the improvements ahead. So this this could be beneficial just for you guys if you want to have a project gun to work on the side to see if you can get it to group and and shoot well. But yep, yeah, let's let's get moving. second i didn't really have that tethered that was straight off the bottle 2200 psi 72 grains equals about 105 107 foot pounds of energy i'm actually really impressed with the groupings right here especially with my fx chronograph sitting off the side of it off the top yeah i'm gonna see hopefully hopefully if it keeps these groupings sometimes the barrel leads up or it's just a fluke, right? You get like five, 10 shots that are just awesome. And then you actually go to to, to consistency and it's just not there. But yeah, let's see what we can do. Put a couple more shots down range. Well, I've been shooting about two and a half hours. Take these off, I guess. And yeah, some of the ammo, some of the ammo just jammed. It wasn't even, I had to take it out with a pair of pliers. It was so, so not fitting in into the Condor. Some of the other stuff really surprised me. Actually, I'm kind of happy because some of the best ammo with the best BC was some of the, the, the tightest groups. And I think you guys seen some of that, but let's get back to the, the house. I kind of walk you through and there's a couple surprise pieces, a little bit of surprise ammo as well. All right, we are back. Condor 25 cow slugs, about 12 different projectiles. You know, we had some we had some pellets and I wasn't overly crazy about getting those, those set up, but I'll kind of give you my impressions. You know, some of these I tried, actually the first slug I tried was the best and that was the one I was most, 
most opportunistic look. I was, I was really looking and hoping that was going to be the one that, that was going to shoot the best, and it actually is. But so I tried, you know, 36.2 Nielsen's, 43.5, even had some 55 grainers, 55.5, but they didn't really fit in the barrel all that well. The first one went in, the second one was, I actually had to take it out with a pair of pliers. Um, had some Griffin 25 cal, 44 grainers. And they were okay. They were kind of dancing around. So the ones that ended up being the best is the Griffin 59.3.249 uh, caliber boat tails. These things are amazing looking. They're they're essentially a little boat tail with a BC of one a 0.169 is the estimated BC. That's astronomical. That's much better than what you're finding from, you know, most of the 25 cal slugs for a BC. Most of them are, you know, 0.11. Some of them are 0.12. They say this is 0.169, ultra low drag. I'm very happy. It was shooting them 886 feet per second. We'll get into to the specifics, but the second runner up is the Griffin 64 grains. These were close. These were close in accuracy. They just weren't quite as consistent. I could probably live with them if I had to. I mean, I, but as, as well as the 59s we're shooting, I just, I'm going to go with that. And the surprising one, the surprising one that ended up is the JSB knockouts. Now I tried this in the Talon P and was not impressed. It just didn't group very well out of the Talon P, but I'm going to give it another shot. I'm going to maybe look at some of the speed, see what I can do and and that but that's really surprising because if we look at the pellets they kind of weren't grouping all that great the 36.2s were all over and then the top three were essentially kind of one one ragged hole and i would say the 59.3s were you know the best groups were probably two-thirds of a dime um it's it was very tight some of them i shot six shots into just one hole and I was like, eh, I don't want to push my luck because this, this group looks pretty doggone good that I can show you. But yeah, the, the I shot a lot. I shot a lot of different groups. I kind of noticed things were bouncing around. I'll, I'll show you, if I haven't shown you already, the groups and that. So the consistency. So sometimes you can have um, a round that kind of groups well, but the, the feet per second isn't there. And the condor is not regulated, so I ended up at the end using kind of the gold star regulator. What you can do is set your external, like a 4,500 PSI tank, and then set your outgoing pressure. And what I ended up setting for this gun was 2,500 PSI. And the groups and the consistency with these boat tails, with these 50, 59.3s were really good. It, it actually held up better than I expected. You know, you can see 886, 8086. I think that was six in a row at that speed. And then it was 884, 886, 8086, and then 882, and then 884, or something around those lines. And this is, you know, not a gun really known for consistent uh, pushing there, but it works well with this slug so far. So the theory is we're going to take this out to the bigger range, 50 uh, and 100. And if it performs halfway decent well there, then we'll go out further. The thing that I have, the question I have about this is sometimes you get what I call the round breaks down, the stability of the slug. So at 25 yards, it does fine, 50. And then after 50, with a little bit of wind, the stabilization of the pellet just starts going crazy or, or the slug, it just starts breaking down. It just can't stabilize and it, it goes to pot. I noticed that a lot with my day states and the 22 and the 177s at about 165 yards past that. They just, they just don't, they don't do very well. I mean, you can hit stuff, but you really start to notice it by 200 and then 220, it really is done. And by 300, you're just, you're just, you're just kind of shooting into the wind because the BC, the stability is just not there. So that's what I want to try to do. I want to get this out on the range. There's a lot of mods I can still do. I haven't even cleaned the barrel. I can pull this off and put on um, a little bit of a barrel tuner, some of these, these limb saver things, devices. There's some anti-slap mods you can put on there 
There's obviously the trigger that can be improved. Yeah, there's there's a few items. I didn't oh I didn't mess with the power at all. It was on power four. And again, 886 feet per second, which is about 104 foot pounds of energy. Yeah, it's moving pretty good. And I have I have power to do more. I could push it up to 2700, turn up the power wheel and, and make it really fly. But at this rate, with the groups I'm getting, I'm just I'm excited. I just want to get out on the range and, and really kind of push this. And then I could be disappointed again at, at how how miserably it fails at long distance. But hey, it was a fun night. Anyway, you guys got comments, questions below, and hopefully in a couple of days I'll get another video out on shooting longer distance. See you later.